So today, open SSO. Okay, this is courtesy of security.nl, powered by Certified Secure. Open SSO conduct belangrit with update on world 25 mart. I don't claim to understand Dutch. If we could get physics as fun in here, no, okay, I'm joking. Really, the the solution here is that I just put this into Google Translate. Um, but yeah, I was gonna do this nice extended program about like how this is the only um, news available about OpenSSL 1.1.1. Uh, version K. Um, however, minutes <laughs> after I went live, news did get posted to the Open SSL Cryptography and SSL TLS Toolkit site. Um, so this might not be. Oh, there's a third piece of news that I've not shown here. Uh, and that's uh, the SSL announcement that come Thursday, two days hence, um, there will be a release uh, with the highest priority issue being fixed, having priority high. So there's something that uh, ostensibly affects common configurations might not affect everyone but um yeah now we're they're starting to itemize things that this release fixes and i was gonna have this nice fun live stream trying to interpret uh impact dick verts but in the however you say this low moderate high and critical um but yeah, the, the notion here is that come two days hence, there's going to be a high priority release. Open SSL 1.1.0. 1. 1. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is 1.1.0. 1. 1. I need the 1.1.1 1. 1. notes. Okay. This is why I'm so confused. Um, yeah, there's still going to be a release K coming out. It's details of which, to the best of my knowledge, are not yet available. Uh, so yeah, this is the 1.1.1 series. You can look at the change log for OpenSSL 1.1.1. Yeah, here we are. So this, not yet available. There are bugs. Bugs get fixed. And to the extent people care about things like potential denial of service attacks and null pointer derefs and crashes and RSA padding and other critic, um, I'm sorry, other vulnerabilities, I need to use language responsibly that I do not know the severity of some of these things. But I do know that these patches that follow a semantic versioning structure. We know that because we just looked and we saw there was another page that referenced 1.1.0, and then there's a 1.1.1, and then there's all these subversion patches off of these patches. Eventually, there could be a 1.1.2 if there's a non breaking patch, um, or there could be a, uh, they could continue in this series with just these incremental things, whatever these are. Again, I'm learning this as I go. Um, but there will be changes. So these changes, presumably, since this is a library... Come on. Can I scroll back up to the top, please? Uh, this cryptography and SSL TLS toolkit, um, this is intended... Uh, for tooling for cryptography and has some security implications. This is not saying that every product should go out there and use OpenSSL. Um, but if you're going to use OpenSSL, uh, consider following the change log to ensure that 
it's possible for you to apply updates when necessary. Uh, there are, I believe, other SSL solutions available that are not open SSL. Um, and so this deals with common things like transport layer security used by F uh, SFTP and secure HTTP. So, um, yeah, this is bleeding edge news. The changes here are not published. So, yeah, we can actually go back to this and um, rather than feigning ignorance, I'm just going to copy this into Google Translate. It's so much more fun to feign ignorance, but this Thursday, March 25th, OpenSSL will release an important security update the OpenSSL project team has announced. The patch fixes one or more vulnerabilities whose impact has been labeled high. Rarely are vulnerabilities with such an impact found in OpenSSL. Now this is according not to me, this is according to security.nl, uh, some security company in the Netherlands. Um, that's my understanding of things. If I'm wrong, matters I'm speaking are of public record and can be easily corrected. And if people tell me, I will correct them. Because, uh, but yeah, it's a matter of public record what that website does and is about and somebody in the area could speak better to that than I could. I'm just doing the best I can to relay information based on very limited information being available until Thursday. Um, if we want, I could provide another update on Thursday. Um, OpenSSL is one of the most widely used software for encrypting internet connections. Websites, for example, use it to encrypt traffic to and from visitors. Vulnerabilities in OpenSSL can have major consequences for the internet, as the heart, blood, heart bleed bug has shown in the past. Now, bear this with a grain of salt. That's technically accurate. Not every vulnerability is as bad as heart bleed. They use the word can have major consequences. They're not saying every vulnerability does. They're not saying that. But um, they, it's a website. Websites serve ads, have cookies, like to drive views to the site. That's a natural phenomenon. And this uh, website, I presume, seeks to inform as well as to scare. Uh, a new version of the software is released several times a year, which fixes security vulnerabilities, etc. Um, they. OpenSSL has four categories, low, moderate, high, and critical. For security vulnerabilities rated high and rated critical, the OpenSSL team will release a new version. The remaining two categories of vulnerabilities will be fixed during scheduled update rounds. So that makes sense. That's, I believe, how other companies do their releases, um, where they'll do, I mean, yeah, you're aware of like Windows Update for one thing, and how there's new Windows versions every so many years. Um, so there's that concept of a scheduled update where you go out and buy a new product or otherwise upgrade to the new version which existed because it was just a good time to do a release. And you're familiar with there being security updates in many platforms. This is a common thing or in internet connected platforms it is common for security fixes to get published through the internet instead of i don't even know i'm actually curious now have security updates ever been delivered um pre-internet um uh surely it's been done surely it's not been as widespread or easy to access as has been on the internet uh, that actually has my curiosity. Like, what was the process for releasing a security fix before everyone had access to everything? I wonder. Anyway, uh, for example, attackers can take over servers. Yeah, again, this is to scare as well as to inform. I'm not saying anything about this particular thing. This is perhaps to address people with not very much technical knowledge 
about what cybersecurity is. Uh, last year, two OpenSSL vulnerabilities were fixed with a high impact rating. No vulnerabilities in the high category were discovered in 2018 and 2019. Details on the issue being patched next Thursday have not been made public. OpenSSL 1.1.1K will be released this Thursday, March 25th, between 14 and 18, I believe that's Central European time. Um, so that would mean for me that Thursday morning, no, eight, let's say that it did get released 18 o'clock Central European time. Um, yeah, there's a possibility I won't know what happened until lunchtime on Thursday. Um, so... If whatever this news is, uh, courtesy of security.nl, if whatever this news is ends up being something of tremendous significance, um, expect me to provide a further update. Um, if this ends up being something that, okay, technically it was a high security or high category issue that got fixed, if it was that for a technical reason, but it does not have a worldwide impact on you and me and everyone, or it does not have a tremendous uh, impact and somehow it was just maybe miscategorized or had to be identified as high priority for some other reason, I might give a brief statement, but um, and we'll see one, when the release is made available, what is in it, and two, um, when the security notes uh, over here are provided, hopefully, hopefully they'll be provided in a very timely fashion so we can make informed decisions about what, what to upgrade and when. Um, but yeah. That's one issue of concern. I would very much like to better understand what this is about because uh, I uh, have 160 something projects that I'm maintaining on GitHub. They're just hobby projects. Um, I would like to be in a position to advise uh, groups like Lee Shogi like Lee Drafts, like Lee Chess, um, obviously the Lee Chess DPAs and other folks uh, would have better knowledge than me on this sort of thing. Um, I, DBA is the wrong word, but all the various Lee Chess experts surely will know of this the instant it gets released. They'll be on top of it. If they're not, I'll do the best I can to be on top of this um, uh, so I can inform other smaller sites like Lee Drafts, Lee Shogi, uh, Lee Words, aka Woogles, um, Play Shogi, etc. Uh, if there's something that does end up being critical, I'm sorry, critical is again the wrong word, something high priority ends up occurring. Um, I will certainly have to let all my friends know. So, um, I don't think it's going to directly impact any of my non-online applications. It probably will indirectly impact, um, well, I don't know. Again, I'm speculating here. There's just no information available other than there's a high category issue. And the security.nl website makes an effort to identify what's going on here. Um, and they make a the statement, that, which is just a matter of public record here, that uh, last year two OpenSSL vulnerabilities with a high impact uh, rating were fixed. Uh, I think that was the same year that those two vulnerabilities were identified. I'm not totally sure, but two last year two were fixed. Um, previous two years, there wasn't anything in this category. These are matters of public record. This is why I was so concerned to see this news. So, 
yeah, that's interesting to note. Um, sorry, I don't have further information about that at this time, but we'll try to keep on it. And if there's something significant, especially if it has some impact on you and me, especially if it's something that's easily fixed by just changing a letter in a config file or deploying a new some executable somehow, um, yeah, then I'll need to get word out. So, um, yeah, it's not that we want the bugs to win, but we cannot let it in action uh, overcome us. So that's one piece of news. Hope you enjoyed that. Secondly, um, well, I'm just a bit tilted at the moment about matters. Um, I'm trying to think how I can be more responsible than the people that I wish to condemn but have no power to. Except in the sphere of public opinion, but even there, like, I need to be careful. <sighs> because, yeah, if one thing became obvious from the latest story from chess.com, that one thing that became obvious is you need to be reserved in your judgment um, until you are able to speak intelligently about it. Um, so, um, I'm not going to publicly read the latest chess.com article to you for multiple reasons, um, the most banal of which is it could be copyrighted, so I don't even want to fight that battle. I don't think I would ever have to fight that sort of battle, because this is such <laughs> the import of the most recent story from chess.com. Um, it's pretty... Again, like, I have to be careful here, because, like, beyond being sensational, it's substantial in a way, or substantive in a way that, um, I, I mean, yes, the numbers of how many views and who said what, um, and how many people reacted to this and what various people had to do in response to other people's responses, all of that is a matter of public record. Um, <laughs> I think. I actually don't know. There's... Um, so what can I say about this latest story that um, that is both respectful to the individual I'm singling out, but also respectful to people who play the game? Man, what a tough line. Uh, what a tough line to stay on the correct side of. Um, so, let me say this. I did watch uh, Rosman uh, play a game against a player who we are... Everyone who spected that, that game is confident that the player cheated. Um, I don't think it's in question that people are very highly confident that this one opponent of uh, this international master did cheat against the international master. I, I don't think there's any dispute of that one fact. Um, I, I'm sorry, I misspeak already among spectators, and I did say that earlier, and I'm saying it again, just so we're clear, I don't think there's any spectator who believes that that particular opponent did not cheat. Um, certainly not amongst those who watch the game live. Um, it would be quite the conclusion to draw, somehow, that fair play rules were not violated. Um, I, 
I have quite an imagination, and even still, I cannot imagine spectators of that game reaching any reasonable conclusion other than uh, cheating occurred. That's not the interesting part of the story. And that's why I have to be careful about this, because um, if you look at media, you will see there is a fascination with that one aspect of this story. So, I want to turn my attention to something different. And I apologize that for copyright reasons again, and I don't want to contest this through fair use channels, even though I have every right to do so, and I would almost certainly come out on top at the end. Um, I'm even more certain than that, honestly, but still. Um, so... I don't think this is the first time a titled player um, has ever produced a video explaining techniques you could use A, to defeat a, an opponent who is cheating, and B, um, to expose an opponent or maximize the possibility for exposure. Um, I myself, although I am not titled, have expressed like there are some games where I will play things out to checkmate so that the website can collect as much information as possible. This seems like common sense, honestly. Um, maybe it's not common sense, and that's why I thought I had to mention it at times that I mentioned it. But yeah, let the website collect information about how the game was played so that the best possible judgment could be made using all available information. If you suspect somebody's cheating, uh, play the game out to completion. Um, do everything you can to advocate for your cause. Uh, that does not mean publicly accusing your opponent. I am not a moderator. I have friends who are moderators. I don't think friends are easily swayed by a forum post saying, oh my god, my opponent cheated. I don't think that helps a person's cause at all. I think moderators are smarter than that. Publicly accusing a player is perhaps the worst thing you can do for your case. I don't, again, no, I'm not a moderator. I don't speak with moderators at this level of detail about anything like this. But I'm just trying to say, like, apply common sense, please. Like, here we have a Grandmaster who hung a pawn, whatever. Obviously, these Grandmasters are far, far beyond reproach. There is, I cannot conceive that um, these players would cheat. Certainly, if there are no stakes available. There's no motivation. All the moves look natural to me in my many years of developing chess engines, etc. Um, so, I'm, these games obviously are above board. Um, but I'm saying that in other games, um, where players could potentially have a motivation to do something nefarious. Um, don't publicly accuse anyone. It doesn't help anything as far as I know. I don't know a lot. If I were a moderator, I would probably drive every other moderator insane with, um, with just um, my desire to, well, twofold. One, to make sure that justice is served. Um, and two, to make sure that justice is available. Like, that players can appeal things ad nauseum. That would be something that I would favor that any other moderator would be sane to reject. That the notion that a player could just constantly appeal and appeal and appeal and appeal and then after enough appeals, they'll get their way. Um, 
I think that's a radical concept. I don't think any other moderator would be on board with it. So, like, yeah, I stay in my lane. <laughs> um, I know moderators do a thankless job. Um, again, that's pretty much common sense and public knowledge at this point. Um, so, and I think that applies regardless of which site we're talking about. Whether it's, I don't know, Crypto Chess or any other site. Like, just imagine, well, I guess I could put it this way. We know that um, two things. One, the Lee Chess budget is a matter of public record, so you know how many people are paid for moderation work. Um because you can just look at that budget directly and see how money was spent. So um, I don't think it's any stretch of the imagination to say that um, the moderation work on Lee Chess is a volunteer effort. Um, also, uh, on uh, chess.com live streams, it, um, that come in the form of, what was it, a quarterly announcement or something of that sort, uh, it was revealed, perhaps it's been said before, likely it'll be said again, that Chess.com has employees who deal with uh, moderation. Or at least they have a team. Maybe they're not employees. Maybe they're a service in a third uh, country. Maybe they're a service not in the United States, but perhaps in a different country. I don't mean to say third world or anything like that. I'm saying just simply that perhaps the service, uh, I'm like they, uh, it has been said on that live stream that they, this team does react to communications throughout the day, throughout the night, it reacts to communications in non-English languages. So this is i believe a substantive team we're talking about that it is sophisticated and understands uh things in good detail um so again what i'm trying to do is act is to produce steel man arguments to say that um uh that there are certain things I don't want to touch. And those things are pretty clear. Like, obviously cheating occurred in that game. Um, because the player is banned. And um, because it was just... Anybody watching the game would reach that conclusion that some form of assistance was used during the game. Um... I don't actually need to comment further on it because you can actually see the game. If you, uh, chances are you've probably already seen the live stream and the video where the game was played. So, like, that's not in question. And further, I'm trying to establish that chess.com is credible. Like, this is contrary to my own interest to say all these things, but I'm putting it out there that. Um, I'm sorry, it's, it's contrary to my involvement in Lee Chess interests in whatever I might say in the event that you think that I'm biased toward one side or another, I'm making clear that chess.com is above reproach as far as determining who is a cheater. That's not in question today. So, so yeah. Um... And further, it was good that this player produced content explaining, like, if you think your opponent's cheating, play the game out. Again, common sense. Again, probably still a good thing. Because some players might, in the heat of the moment, lack that common sense. Um, some players might not have ever had to do some sort of investigation into an opponent to figure out if they were cheating or not. 
So, um, what more can I say about that particular live stream slash video? Um, so, um, it's not easy to say things. It's really not. Because uh, I have limited access to information. You have limited access to information. Um, uh, I can say that that live stream is no longer listed on YouTube. You may or may not be able to find it as an unlisted video if you try hard enough. But I cannot provide additional information, nor do I want to in that regard. Um, I can remark that I have seen the video. Um, what else can I say? Um, most players online don't cheat. There are many players who do, and it makes the experience sad for quite a few players. But by and large, opponents are above board. Like, and yeah, on other non-chess sites, we have seen instances of cheating. It's not just chess where opponents have this concern or idea. Um, and it's actually interesting to me how in other communities that's handled. But again, that's a different subject a different day. Um, so, I want to criticize, um, and I need to be very careful here, because I don't want to have to open up the video and show you all, any or all of it. I would probably not be in a position to do that this instant anyway. Um, but, yeah, sorry, I'm struggling to think of my words here. Oh, that's, I'm also distracted by this game in progress. It's a good game. I guess what I can go into is my own philosophy on, uh, cheating. I believe that many, many, many players care if cheating occurs. Some players would be fine <laughs> wanting to like draw and quarter uh, players who ruin the game for the rest of the internet. Um, uh, it's only the slightest exaggeration to say like some players are extremely angry when they see that cheating has occurred. Um, so that's a sensitive subject, is what I'm trying to say. Um, personally, uh, I think for me, it depends on the context. Um, so, uh, I guess I should share a personal story. Why not? Um, yeah, back in the day, I forget it was junior high or something. Um, yeah, one of my friends and I had decided to play an online game. Um, by about... I don't know. By about move 15, it was pretty obvious that they had drastically improved at the game. By move 25, it was clear blatant cheating that it was clear that blatant cheating was afoot. That my own friend that I'd known for years had decided, hey, I've got a fun idea. I'll show Dan. <laughs> And he didn't mean anything serious by it. And I, like, yeah, I don't hold it against him. 
There's no money at stake. There's no reputation at stake. There's our own egos. And he was willing to play a game with me. So I was happy about like just playing the game. And okay, I lost a couple rating points. I'm like, ah, whatever. I'll get it back eventually. Uh, there's a simpler time. Just two friends playing a game where one friend cheats against the other. Like, what's wrong with that? Uh, I think it's a charming anecdote. I really do. King takes. Oh, they missed king take. Well, king, yeah, king takes probably wins. Rook takes. Yeah, they found this other way to win. Anyway, so... Um, I mean, um, uh, there, uh, there did come some point during the game where it became obvious to me what my opponent was up to. Um, note the bishop controls the dark square in the corner anyway. That was funny. Um, yeah, I should watch Blitz instead of Bullet. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a top rated game. Let's watch some Blitz. Um, so those were simpler times where, I mean, if it's just two friends, it's certainly like, there's not going to be anything more than a slap on the wrist for that sort of thing. Like friends enjoy each other's company. That's why they are friends to the end. Um... If there's strangers playing against each other and one cheats against the other. I mean, you've seen opponents get banned on Lee Chess after playing games against me, where I would play the game out to completion. And then, I mean, you've seen me uh, in a couple instances on live streams where that's actually happened, that my opponent's been banned. And I think on one occasion I even said, oh... Well, we're dealing with something special here today, aren't we? So, like, I said something to that effect. And that is not the same thing as a cheating accusation. That's an insinuation. That's like your double entendre territory, where you're like, hey, you know what? They could be using a computer, or they could be just, like, drastically better than they've ever been before. Either way, this is exciting. See that? There's nothing wrong with that. There's no accusation. The, there's a supposition that like a player got a lot better, or somehow there's some other explanation, but... See, that sort of like playful attitude? Fine. That's never going to draw any negativity into things. Um... Okay, so that deals with, like, free, fun games where perhaps rating points are at stake for some inconsequential online game. Fine. What about rated games? What's my opinion there? Um, where we're talking about, like, a USCF or FIDE or other rating. Uh, I have previously... Um, participated in USCF rated events on several chess websites. Um, rather, these were USCF Blitz rated, but still, there was a rating at stake. I forget. Um, no, I have won prize money in some events, but I don't believe that those were rated under the USCF rules. Because that gets complicated for uh, gambling reasons. They they don't couple those things together. There's no purchase necessary uh, in order to participate in prize money tournaments due to U.S. gambling laws. So there's no requirement for most online money chess tournaments. There's no requirement to be a member of anything. Um. But yeah, I've played in USCF rated events, and I've separately played in online money events where very little money was at stake. Um, and in the USCF rated events, 
I forget if it was one of my own events, but certainly on platforms on which um, I've played events, one of which where I was an administrator slash moderator, if you want to use that term, um, that um, things did work themselves out after the event. Uh, players, I believe, got suspended or banned and ratings were restored. So if we're talking just about ratings, there is a process for handling that in terms of uh, getting U.S. Chess Federation ratings corrected in the event that a player um, appeals to the ratings committee and or whoever it needs to be appealed to, that process works itself out. There are many stories about how this process works itself out. It does work. There's no question about the process working. Um, there are uh, concerns when adults make public accusations against other adults or public accusations against children. Um, those also are subject to processes. That's a separate discussion entirely, but there are processes for that too. And those processes also work. So, yeah, there's laws and rules that work. Basically, for whatever the circumstances, there are rules in place already to handle these circumstances. Unless, say, you are dressed in some very resplendent uh, attire at a FIDE rated tournament, and the tournament director calls you something. Uh, but even then, like, that was all done according to the process, and a lot of people got mad about the words that were used. Um, but uh, actually, having spoken to quite a few people on that subject, um, yeah, no, I think the tournament director was actually in the clear on that, despite having used a bad word. I think that's fine in this one very limited particularized instance where the tournament director had to respect the wishes of the uh, companies sponsoring the event, as well as respect the wishes of all the other players of the event. I was livid about that for some point, but uh, I think I've come around and seen the light, having actually talked with quite a few people about that. Um, but yeah, there's processes for all these things, even something as insane as, uh, like, possible definition. I mean, the U.S. Chess Federation is no stranger to a defamation lawsuit. There's processes for everything. Chess players are procedural. Um, they get things done according to the rules of the game and according to the rules of the organization, etc. All right, so I've dandered around the topic long enough. So what was it that really ticked me off about the video? Um, so we have a video that received millions of views. So there's a need for that video to address a large audience. There is a duty that if there are errors in the video, some public correction needs to be made, an apology needs to be made. If there are errors, or if there are perhaps even sensitive things, it's not unusual for companies or organizations to issue apologies that are unwarranted. That's not an unusual thing. White's probably going to win this. Uh, I'm not so sure anymore. I mean, a split... But no, I'm sorry, that was the right move. Rook c7. But still, like, white's pawn advances so quickly here. Um, oh, it's white playing to draw this. Also, white's the higher rated player. 
so it's no surprise for me to predict a white wins this game. Oh, no. You have to move the king up and the rook over and prevent rook takes pawn. Prevent rook takes pawn. It's too late. Prevent rook takes pawn. There we go. White wins. Unless black manages to salvage in time trouble. But it's going to be very hard to salvage despite level material. White try... Oh. <sighs> well, that's disappointing. Congratulations. Oh, I'm sorry, black's the higher rated player. And now we know why. That's disappointing. Because white played that in an interesting way. They did not agree to a draw. They played it out. Um, but yeah, what ticked me off about the video was that, okay, yeah, there's this audience that obviously needs to be addressed in a responsible manner, befitting of the individual who's um, in featured in the video. Um, so, yeah, that needs to they obviously have some authority, um, at least to produce the video in the first place with the logo of the company. Like, they have some press representation that they are making, um, or they have some online representation that they're making on behalf of the, the company and its stakeholders, whether that this is the message they intended to get out or not, that that was their role in having promoted this video. Um, I hope I'm not over-speaking there, but like what I'm saying is that if you're going to do a live stream with a company logo on it, and you do not make abundantly clear that these are my own opinions, that these are not the opinions of the company, I think most people still get that these are your opinions, that these are not the opinions of the company, but you're more or less legally obligated to say such things, because not everybody gets that. Uh, if you've got training in public speaking, you know this sort of thing. Um, if you've been trained by legal counsel, you know this sort of thing. So, um, I think people still understand that these were not, like, prepared remarks. Um, he didn't expect to find an opponent who would cheat, I don't think. Um, if he did expect to find his an opponent who cheats, what does that say? Like, on a website that, like, prides itself on there not being much cheating, but also prides itself on taking care of real problems and banning players in a timely fashion, etc. Like, there's no way he could have anticipated in advance, uh, unless there's some serious consideration I'm somehow overlooking. There's no way he could have known, oh yeah, this is going to be the opponent that cheats this time. That couldn't have been possible, right? So... So, I'm thinking, okay, maybe he had perhaps... Uh, he had maybe prepared remarks while in some previous stream, or perhaps he had thought about the subject in the past. That's one possibility. To me, the more likely possibility is that these were unprepared remarks and should be taken as such, and he should be given the benefit of the doubt wherever possible that um, he could have had uh could have not understood what he was talking about to the level that he would need to to address an audience that would receive eight million views or however many millions of views were received um i yeah if eight million is the wrong number i don't remember how many times that video was watched but it got very popular, especially compared to my own content. But especially also compared to, um, I don't know, like the hundreds and thousands of video producers who dream of reaching such an audience someday. Uh, chess players or otherwise. 
Um, so with great power comes great responsibility is what I'm trying to say. And clearly he had a lot of positive things to say. Um, he demonstrated a technique that if you were to play a certain opening, that um, that would be an exploit that if you become familiar with this opening where you just shuffle your pieces around and most engines will struggle to come up with crushing ways uh, to play against such an opening that that maximizes your chances against a cheater and whether or not that's true like evidently it worked in the game where his opponent just like spent like three to five seconds every single move and his opponent just slowly struggled to overcome uh, this player's position like yeah okay some openings can be played that way. Um, and that's probably a reasonable course of action, as reasonable as anything could be. Like, I don't see anything wrong with that. If somehow, and I don't even know how you would know, but if somehow you knew that your opponent was cheating, you could try to play that. Sure. Um, what else... Um, so I was trying to get to the point that with great power and great influence also comes great responsibility, and I know my own influence is not that great. I'm not that proud. Um, so, I mean, yeah, like, I do have a video somewhere out there that's got, I made a video about let's play anti-chess and it's got thousands of views and it's like one of my most watched videos ever so like the stuff that i do on my uh youtube channel generally does not get watched but goodness if i put an anti-chess video out there it'll get attention if i were to drop a video out there that were to make wild accusations about opponents that would get viewed i don't do that very few players do such a thing if i were to make a video and say cheaters exposed that would get views i'm not interested in that i'm remarking that like if you set out with a goal of at any costs, uh, there are ways to make videos more popular. That's not always a good thing. That needs to be carefully thought about before you do such a thing. Because if you insult the wrong opponent, you could end up in Indonesian court. I'm joking. But am I? But I'm joking, right? But am I? Anyway, um, that's not even my main focus, but I'm just saying, like, think things through. Please be respectful. Please be careful. Um, don't end up in Indonesian court. Again, I'm kind of joking on that, but... Man, in the interest of science, I would like to see this sort of situation play itself all the way through to just really understand what's going on. That's... That's a bit morbid. And, like, I have to temper that with the reality that there are a lot of chess players online who care very strongly about this subject of cheating. And so I can't just have my scientists' mad science way about things. I can't just force things through the legal system. That doesn't help anyone. There are a lot of players who care very strongly about this game. Um, so, yeah, please be polite and respectful and thoughtful. 
even if you're like 100, 1,000, 1 trillion percent certain that your opponent is cheating, still be mindful that, like, they're human. And understand that just because you perceive things one way doesn't mean that everybody perceives it that same way. Even, like, supposing, like, you might be correct like supposing that you've read the situation correctly that my opponent is using fritz 3.4 or shredder 2.8 or whatever like i don't even know who would use what these days i mentioned 3.4 because obviously that's a ridiculously old version number and being satirical here but like you could with enough research, come up with a way to know which engine was used with some degree of certainty. You might be, you might feel certain. You might even have evidence that draws very extremely strong conclusions that we can determine that for this game, between moves 35 and 42, we believe with so much confidence this, that, or the other. And yeah, you can have statistical models from which you draw inferences. That doesn't mean the inferences are right. There have been cases where like blind people and deaf people and things like this have... I'm sorry, blind people. At least one blind person has used a hearing aid during a game and somehow uh, has been banned for what is the most obvious cheating ever. I'm joking, but like, this player suddenly improved by hundreds of rating points and then failed to explain his games afterward. Um, and so obviously some action needs to be taken or the sport is brought into disrepute. And action was taken through the appropriate channels and it took a long time and Addressing things that are complicated is not easy. So, um, where was I going with that? But yeah, the you can be drawing very strong statistical inferences. You will still fight many other battles along the way if you make it your objective to just get views. I don't even know what it means to get a view. Like, but people will try to make sure that their videos that are ad sponsored and monetized or whatever, they'll make an effort to promote their own brand. And I'm just saying, like, don't get entangled in things you really have no interest in being entangled in. You can't, like, make accusations and then say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way. Accusations are hard to take back. So, if you're going to make accusations, stand by them. If you're, um, if you're not going to make accusations, you've probably picked a wiser path. Um, I mean, you might, yeah, um, no, I'm, I am alluding to that, yeah. And just, I mean, the one thing that seems abundantly clear to any viewer is that some sort of assistance very likely was used. That seems very likely. It, I think any reasonable viewer would draw that conclusion. Um, but everything else that was part of that incident, like, just... It's so maddening that I put so much effort into my own science, into my own craft of trying to help people understand that, like, 
Science needs to be used responsibly. Yeah. Yeah. Like... And I think there are some organizations, especially... Um, no, I, I don't need to call out other organizations. But there are some that have ethics departments related to AI use. Like, that is so forward thinking. And then there's organizations that are on the other end of the spectrum. That's... It's just so night and day. Um... And to me, it seems so short-sighted. I don't know about you, but... Um, yeah. Whether you get, like, one million viewers, or a million and one, or a million and five, I don't think that kind of trade-off is worth some of the things that could be said. Um, so, yeah. It just blows my mind that what happened in that incident. And then, like, there was an opponent. And this opponent, like, he's a fairly popular dude. That obviously is a matter of public record. This is something, like, actually, the, the way I elevate this conversation is by uh, quoting the art of war. Know thyself, know thy opponent, a thousand battles, a thousand victories. There are other things that are said in the art of war, but be prepared. If you're going to pick a fight like that, really, really be careful. Most people have the common sense to be careful and not pick fights with strangers. Um, I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. That did cause quite a stir. And again, like, I would advise Wesley so... In that case, it's too late now, but... Um, so there's another thing I have to say here, and that there's this great saying by Franklin Delano Roosevelt um, that an error does not become a mistake until you refuse to correct the error. You know, I could have saved myself an hour here um, if I had just led with that, because it really speaks for itself. I'm sorry, I attributed that to FDR. It's attributed to JFK. Um, but he, JFK is absolutely right. That, like, at the point at which you make the error, that's not a mistake yet. When you make the error, and then double down and triple down and quadruple down on it, and still refuse to issue an apology or any kind of statement, that's the point at which it becomes a mistake. So, I think whatever was said in the heat of the moment probably can pass. Oh, uh, so back to Wesley So, um, Yeah, I would advise Wesley. Just be very careful about making public accusations. There's already processes in place to handle things like this. There's no sense getting caught up in the woodwork here. Rook takes bishop just wins there. Rook takes bishop wins again. Um, because of knight h2, or knight h4, rook e to g3. And if knight takes g6, queen takes g2, mate. Well, I'm sorry, with the queen on d5, there's no longer the mate. But my point here, like, there's that... White being a 2,696 online rated Grandmaster missed a combination that I, as spectator, saw. Like, um, 
either that or I'm hallucinating something, but I think many engines, many computers may have played the combination with Rook Takes Knight that I was looking at there. Or sorry. So um that's to say like here I am an amateur criticizing the move of a grandmaster. This can happen. There can be that one in a trillion game where a player just completely outshines their opponent. And to that I would say play a rematch. Play another game. Play five games. Play ten games. Collect all the data in the world. And then don't be the one drawing the conclusion. Don't get caught up in it. Um, let the science work itself out. The great thing about science is that it works whether or not you choose to believe in it. Neil deGrasse Tyson. So yeah, um, somehow remarkably we've concluded on a positive note that yeah, just trust in the science. Things will work themselves out. It is possible for a player to have that one in a trillion game. Um, Having two of those in a row seems unlikely. Having five of those in a row would raise some questions. Having 40 of those games in a row where you are playing against an opponent who claims to be the world champion, who knows everything about the world champion, would seem to confirm that your opponent's identity as a world champion. Uh, but you can never know. So, like, yeah, when there's a player who claims to be Fisher, immediately answers questions about uh, that only Fisher could answer, and plays 40 of the best games ever to have been played on the internet, that can be strong evidence to suggest that perhaps that was Bobby Fisher playing those online games. Um, you don't know. Nobody can know for sure. Yeah, science is full of mystery, uh, but it also provides a way for us to know things for certain. Um, or, I'm sorry, to know things beyond all reasonable doubt. Um, we can know things um, and feel very comfortable drawing conclusions about things. Um, I'm trying to think if science actually has a way that we could be absolutely certain about things. Um, and I don't think it does. If you get really philosophical about it, like what you see, what you hear, what you taste and touch, these things might not be real. We could be in some kind of matrix universe. Um, but I think at some point it does become counterproductive to draw such conclusions. But also, like, there, it's not at all productive to conclude that your opponent's cheating. Because, like, where does that lead? Okay, you don't want to play that opponent anymore? Fine. If it's in the context of, like, a live stream where somebody's reputation's at stake, okay. Setting straight that rec record and reputation, fine. Whatever. It's just this digital thing. It'll pass. If there's money at stake, fine. Money, too, will pass. Money, fame, glory, power, all these things come and go. Um, so, yeah, there's processes to work out a lot of these things. And I don't think that drawing a conclusion that, oh, my opponent cheated, oh, how horrible. Like, that doesn't lead anywhere. Um... You might care for the sake of other players. You might care for the sake of the game. You might care for so many noble reasons. But, like, at the end of the day, does it matter? If your opponent cheated? You might care for your opponent and their well-being. If they're using an engine, perhaps they are unwell. You could care. But in these cases where you care about your opponent's well-being and want to help them uh, pull the beam out of their eye, 
Make sure you've handled the one in your eye first. Or you want to help them remove the speck from their eye. Fix the beam in your own eye. Uh, physician, heal thyself, etc. Like, do no harm. How many things can I say here? But, yeah, like... If you're going to draw these conclusions that don't lead to productive places, be careful about it. Um... I did leave a comment for um, that one employee. I remarked that it's good that he's explaining uh, techniques for ensuring that the site can gather as much information as possible to maximize the chances of a successful report. I think that is a good thing for science. It's a good thing for everyone to understand that like the ability of the site to do anything does depend on whatever data they can collect. Which raises the next question about what they're collecting, but still. Um, you have to provide some opportunity for inference to be drawn if the site's going to do anything. Fine. That probably didn't merit <laughs> anyway <laughs> i don't need to say more on that you know where i'm going um so yeah potentially you could care for the sake of your opponent out of some benevolence you could actually want your opponent to not suffer from whatever it is that causes them to do such a horrible thing but is it so terrible? Well, it depends. If the object is for your opponent to try to simulate how... If your opponent's trying to train you to play in a real game, to play in a real match, say you've got some big tournament coming up and you want to play against an opponent, and you don't have a good opponent available, maybe your friend will play with you, but only if they can use an engine. And otherwise they'll refuse to play. Yeah, Night Takes Night was better there. Uh, but obviously White's in time pressure. I'm oh, sorry, no. Black? Oh, Black timed out. Alright, I'm mad. I can go look at a rapid game. Um, White could have won that legitimately. Instead, White... Managed to win on the clock. Yeah, you can know that there's going to be some degree of uncertainty with pretty much anything. Um. Huh. Oh no. Oh no, White's King. Wow, this is beautiful. This is so complicated. But yeah, if a friend's playing with a friend and they're trying to train you for a tournament, maybe in that context, maybe cheating makes sense. Not that you'd ever expect a tournament opponent to cheat, but like if they're trying to do the best job they can to prepare you, um, maybe part of that preparation does involve using assistance. There's a the draw. If either player claims the draw, there's the draw. Um, so, that's one thing. If these are two anonymous players, or if one player doesn't know the other, or both players don't know each other, but they're pseudonymous rather than anonymous, or whatever the cases are, um, and if one player cheats, and another player's reputation is sullied because of it, that's not on you to correct. That's on the website to correct. It's not your job to deputize yourself to become a sheriff or whatever like the metaphor is. It's not your job to correct the ratings. It's not your job to correct the reputations. It is your job to educate and inform. And so, to whatever extent you can collect data, send it to the site, tell them, like, yeah, I think my opponent cheated, please look into it. It's probably the right attitude. Whether or not the site actually does anything separate, but um, 
I guess on that note, whether or not the site does anything, when I first started playing on chess.com, like my first five to ten Blitz games, I won most of them, obtained a rating of somewhere around 18 to 1900, because I'm a good player. The website reminded me, please don't use an engine. And I'm like, okay, I get website while you're telling me this because your average player is lower rated than I am. I could understand why you want to put this gentle reminder in place. Um, I've played on other chess websites. None of them have ever offered me such a gentle caution as the site did. I am still amused to this day that the way you would address such a strong player would be to remind them not to cheat. Um, perhaps this isn't a simpler time. Perhaps this is a time where they might not have had the same advanced tooling they have today. And they had to rely more on kind of, well, one, the goodwill and generosity of the players. Um, and to, well, if you didn't have the tooling available, you'd have to rely, I guess, on more of player reports and see, like, oh, this player accused that player, let's start to look into it. As opposed to having processes and other stuff run 24-7 and handle everything. Like, um, yeah, I think that's okay. But given the era in which I received that message, uh, I can imagine if, like, other players, even titled players, had tried to play on the site, and each time they had gotten this, they either got a message prompting them, please tell us that you're a titled player, or please just, please don't cheat. Um, I'm sure that would be a little bit off-putting in English. I'm not sure how that translates in other languages and regions and cultures. Um, so that's a tricky thing to balance all of these interests online. Um, and I kind of get why I got the message. Was I cheating? Hell no. But was it even close to... Could it even be misconstrued from the moves of my game, from my move times, from anything I was doing? with one browser tab open, directed, just like, I had the one browser tab using a popular browser at the time. The browser was entirely focused on the website. It was clear I was doing nothing other than playing this game here. My move times were that of a Blitz game. There's like zero evidence at all whatsoever that suggests, other than like, I played good moves. But... I'm a good player. I don't have a title. I don't. I, I've actually applied on this website in more recent years because anonymous players still accuse me. And I told the website, you know, look, I'm not a national master. Obviously, I don't cheat. Could you do something about these players on your website who are accusing me of engine use? how this happens over and over again. Could you please, like, put something on my official profile to differentiate it from other Toad accounts, to differentiate it from other similar-sounding names and those which uh, in their name are suggestive that I cheat, and those that impersonate me. I put all these notices together saying, could you please just, like, give me, like, a marker on the site that, hey, chess.com knows that, like, I'm a human and that knows my identity because it's the easiest thing to verify ever. Okay, I don't have those two special letters NM next to my name. I don't even want that. I just want, hey, this is Dan. Can you give me a this is Dan marker on the website to differentiate me from these imposters who are slandering me. 
this the website was not interested in such a thing. Um, they did respond and they said, oh, I don't think we're going to get to doing that. I'm like, okay, fine. Whatever. Slander me. That's fine. Do nothing about it until I report each incident of it happening. Fine. Eventually, legal action is an avenue for me if I need it. There are processes for these things, too. I'm not even overly concerned about it. I'm just concerned for the benefit of other developers and players and folks that are like rated, I don't know, 1800 plus in the real world. That the average amateur could be easily convinced into thinking that cheating is happening, even though there could be zero evidence whatsoever. Like, this is... There's got to be some line where you're talking about a strong amateur player that the typical inexperienced person could easily pers be persuaded into thinking cheating's happening. And I, again, don't want to make this about me. I'm saying, like, if you look at the U.S. Chess Federation rating distribution, you will find that somewhere there is the top decile of players. Somewhere there's the top 20%. Somewhere there's the top 30%. Pick a number. Draw a line somewhere. Say that, like, we want to have some way to make sure that accusations don't fly against 30% of our user base. I think that would go a long way, especially if your website, if your staff even, are promoting this mania that's irresponsible stuff. Like, I think there are better ways to handle things. Um, I'm not saying any one particular approach is best. So, really what drives me to making all these remarks today, two things. One, by now you've probably gathered what my opinions are. If you haven't, perhaps you haven't been listening. That's okay. I don't judge. Uh, two, um, we all know that presently, I am a developer for Lee Chess. The opinions I share are that of my own. They're not of that of Lee Chess. These are my opinions. Lee Chess has not made remarks on the matter. I am concerned for the future of my sport. Now, I call this my sport. This is actually one of these things where I'm questioning, like, what am I doing playing chess? I don't have to play chess. I could play Shogi. I could play Scrabble. There are other games out there. I'm concerned for the future of my sport. These are my opinions. These are not the opinions of Lee Chess. Lee Chess might not be in a good position to make a public statement about the stuff that Chess.com is saying. I'm not saying Lee Chess should. I'm just saying, like, like FIDE partners with Chess.com. This drives the strategic direction of the international chess community. Twitch partners with Chess.com. Twitch has not partnered with Lee Chess. The partnership between Chess.com and Twitch might preclude Twitch from partnering with Lee Chess. There could be other reasons that such partnership doesn't occur, but there could be something nefarious. Afoot. Now, again, I'm not saying there is. I'm saying there could be. I'm not even suggesting there's any evidence to support it. I'm just saying, like, I have every reason to be concerned about the future of my sport. Particularly at a time when I can choose to be playing other games. That's about the extent of what I can say, because, like, there's not evidence to support anything beyond that.
If there were evidence, I'd take it through the appropriate channels, and if there ever becomes it, I will. But also, like, yeah, like, it's just sad. I think the sport can do better. I think the people can do better. Um, and, yeah, I, I don't know. I think eventually there will become more open source gaming websites. Perhaps not as popular as Lee Chess. Perhaps more popular than Lee Chess. Yeah, I wrote this special little user CSS to make the site look cool. Um, I relied on a commercial website to do my cloud hosting for this user style. That commercial site's down. I don't have time to fix it. But I, I wrote, like, see, this is a, such a great website that I could make my own user style to make it look however I want. It's wonderful. It took a lot of effort, but it looks beautiful to me. Do I use keyboard for ultra? You know, given all the other topics I brought up today, um, it's interesting that we explore this too. Uh, do I? No. Does Leech Us allow it? Leech Us allows it. Would I use it if I could? Um, this is interesting. Uh, yeah, no, I've seen the extension. It's, this is actually, ironically, like, on point for the topics I am trying to address today. So, I've previously said, like an hour ago, that um, I do stay out of moderation affairs because, like, my opinions as a potential moderator would radically differ from that of any other potential moderator, so I would almost certainly cause friction. Um, so my opinion's twofold. Um, one, absent any other reason, to me, I don't see anything wrong with the keyboard. If somebody can't give me some reason to say this is bad, I don't see anything wrong with it. So then we have to consider immediately what follows from that reasoning. Is that, okay, what reasons have been given that this could be a bad thing? Well, it's assistance. Our terms of service forbid use of any external assistance. You have to put that in context. Um, so, I don't know. Um, is it against that terms of service? Not for me to judge. There's rules and procedures in place for figuring that out. Um, it's not something I'm judging. I'm not a moderator. Um, another possible reason that could be given is, oh, it's so unfair. Then don't play Ultra Bullet. Or come up with a player's union. Have the player's union make their own rules and agree to blacklist everybody who uses the keyboard. Um, or have this player's union contact the website, come up with the rules and procedures, etc., to say, like, okay, this is bad and we need to do something about it. I'm sure if there were a real problem, Leech Us would do something. Or petition directly to Leech Us absent a player's union, saying that this is wrong, this is outrageous, we cannot allow this keyboard. Um, write that respectfully, submit that, and it will be considered by moderators. I don't know how they consider things. Again, I'm not a moderator. Again, if I were a moderator, like, I would probably drive every other moderator crazy, just given my own predilection for things. Um, so, yeah, I don't remember there being any re rule, reason, or cause against it. Is it unfair? Well, if the opponent has access to the same thing, is it unfair? Maybe. Not for me to judge. 
This is too great a matter for me to figure out. Um, so uh, we could talk about specific features of such a thing. So, um, I listed some potential reasons of my own, actually. Like, I noted, hey, a person could just, like, hold down parts of the keyboard and just mash the mouse button, and, like, the website would play the game for them. Um, like I said, I'm not the moderator. That's not my judgment call. Yeah, the threat there is, uh, rook up. Look over checkmate. There was no way out of it. Um, so I thought maybe that could be a concern, but maybe not. I don't know. Uh, like you say, another feature, multi pre move. Maybe that could be a concern. Maybe not. I don't know. Is it fair? I don't know. I'm pretty detached from all of this, really. Um, I don't have really a horse in this race. Um, so if, um, if we're asking me to remark, like supposing I had a horse in the race, now we're already pretty far afield, right? But let's say I wanted to play and I thought I was making a new website from scratch, and I wanted to come up with some rules that, to me, sounded reasonable. Um, is there anything in principle wrong with multi pre move? Well, some players might be on devices where they might not be able to pre move or multi pre move, so they wouldn't play that category. Is that a good thing or a bad thing for the players? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, some players might use browsers that are infested with viruses or other things, spyware, malware, whatever. Like, perhaps installing these things, like these extensions, into your browser could expose you to security problems, and therefore it's not a good thing to allow extensions, maybe. Or rather, not to allow, but if we're allowing it, perhaps this encourages players to put their rating ahead of their own personal security. If things ever came to that point, um, yeah, I think hopefully people would do the right thing. But I don't know. It's complicated. There are rules and procedures for all these things. Uh, the average person might not be tech savvy enough to know that installing an extension presents a security hole. Um, what I do know is that, as a developer, I'm not developing such a thing because I could never develop one that would make all the players happy. I could never develop one that would improve e the happiness of even a single player. I think it's a feature not worth developing. And that if players really have strong opinions, they can make their own because that's just something that, if you try to make that, I've seen various implementations of Smart Move and things like this. None of them have any player fully satisfied, and if one player is happy, another one's not happy. So I just, I have a hard time finding a horse in that race. That, like, why would I ever want to implement something that's just going to make players mad? I don't know. Queen h4 wins a pawn, but loses a knight, but probably wins the rook. Um, that's interesting. Yep, there's queen h4. So here we have a 2,400 rated player who in a 10 minute game missed a simple tactic. Um, anyway. I say simple, it's not trivial, but it's all the ideas are pretty straightforward. Um... Yep, there's the pawn. Just as I said, there's the mate threat. Now they get to spend the next eight minutes complaining about how they missed the threat and how if they'd only seen it, they could have won. But it's too late. There's no take back button. Even if there is, black would be 
unwise to allow a take back here, where clearly white did not think before moving, or might have thought and just completely missed something, and there's just no helping white. Anyway, but um, separately, so I could never make something that would make the players happy. I think there could be room for an extension, not for gameplay, because again, I think computer assistance during actual gameplay is a, a special sacred category that a lot of players care about, regardless of what Leech's mods say on the matter. I think players do care. I think if a player is playing Bullet or Ultra Bullet and uh, their opponent is using an extension, I think this player does care. I think that's a common phenomenon, whether or not it's right. Um, it's just, you're going to be fighting an uphill battle to try to justify allowing such an extension in rated play. Um, and maybe less of an uphill battle trying to justify it for unrated play. Bishop f1 is forced. Wow, that's funny. Knight check. <clears throat> Knight check. Uh, it's going to land here soon enough. Uh, okay, White well, tried to set a trap. I would have fallen into it. Black was smarter. Black's not distracted. I'm distracted. Alright, now the knight check. And then there goes the bishop. And, yeah. You don't have to take the bishop right away, because it can't go anywhere. Instead, just play something like rook c8. Bishop f6 is fine. But yeah, rook c8 just demolishes white here. So if you can get that rook active before white can get his king out of this mating net, um, white's going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I think... Um, uh, for actual gameplay, extensions really do not help the sport. Likewise, I think multi-pre-move, even though it's a built-in feature into a site which serves you ads, and the fact that at least one ad in recent months has contained malware, um, that was bad. Bad things happen from time to time. Nobody's perfect. But, like... If you're maintaining this large, complex uh, application, and then you're just throwing in features like multi-pre-move, expect that eventually you're going to fuck up, and you're not as good at coding as you think you are. So don't try to implement every feature, and then complain when things don't work out. Implement features that players care about. Be careful about implementing really complex things that are so difficult to support um, not just in the short term but also in the long term also across many browsers many devices like potentially a feature like multi pre-move just isn't worth it and could potentially i mean if you're trying to determine is it worth it also consider not just in some moral sense like is this a feature that some players morally um, are opposed to or morally are in favor of, you actually have to like to do some ROI analysis. And even the most trivial ROI analysis surely must conclude that like if you could make a dollar from a player by adding this feature and it costs you a thousand dollars to implement it, Maybe that's not worth it. I can't understand any economic argument that would justify implementing and supporting on every browser, on every device. Now, it's already been coded. It's too late now to do the ROI analysis. Unless it's continuing to cause you buckets and buckets of money, and it probably is, both directly and indirectly. Um, like, 
there's probably maintenance costs, and then there's probably security hole costs when things don't go right. Um, and I don't want to conflate things, because I don't know the math, I don't know the numbers, I haven't seen any of this, but, like, I just cannot conceive of any universe where it makes sense to implement that feature into the website and offer it to everyone and still maintain the uh, privacy, security, etc. Like, there's just, it's too difficult. Nobody's that good. And experience will be the teacher as to whether people are that good at coding or not. Um, yeah, the Lee Chess app also. It's actually another instance of this predated Lee Chess 2.0. This is an app that um, continues to exist, continues to cost effort to develop. Um, is it worth that effort? Well, in any one patch that gets released, maybe it's worth it for that one patch for however many people are still using the mobile app. Um, even though we recommend try using a mobile browser some people will prefer to use a mobile app. And I don't know why. Maybe they have a kid and that kid wants to play on the website, but you don't want that kid to have access to every browser app. You just want them to play just this one website. And you want it to be in kid mode the entire time. And you want to know that this is going to work. Okay. We're talking about some real people, real use cases. Maybe there's some reason to maintain it. I don't know if that kind of analysis has been done. I don't know what the reason is for it to continue to be maintained, but it's probably just that like the cost of maintaining it is very low, and the benefit of maintaining it is probably actually high enough to continue justifying its maintenance. I'm not fully sure. Um, like... If we were to come up with a completely new website, say like Lee Connect 4, uh, we would prefer the same like thing that Lee Chess 2.0 did, where you don't have to have an app installed to use the site. You can just use any browser or any standard browser. Um, we'd make an effort to support things like Chrome and uh, Safari, I guess, whatever it is that's on the iOS app. I don't know. I don't know anything about that, but like, if you were to make a Lee Connect 4, you probably would not want to make a app. Um, somebody has asked, should we produce a Lee Shogi app? Maybe. That's about as far as I went with that analysis. I'm like, maybe? Okay. Next subject, no. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so why does Lee Chess continue to have an app? Well, they've had it in the past. Um, I guess its maintenance must justify its cost of maintenance. Like, there must be enough people using devices just for puzzles or just for kid mode or whatever it is that's in that app. People must have real use cases why they would prefer it over a browser, or people would just use the browser on their mobile device. I don't really know. It's a good question. Um... So, yeah, there's obviously costs both on the part of the person maintaining the app or people maintaining the app, as well as on the cost of um, our back-end developers just making sure that they never, ever break that app, ever. Um, so, yeah, that's interesting. Um... Where was I going? But yeah, thinking about human world costs, think about, um, I'm sorry, think about real world economics, thinking about who's affected by which changes, and you don't know everything, so don't implement every feature ever. I am probably one of the worst offenders in this category, where I encourage Lee Chess to implement variants. I feel guilty about this. 
we did a tremendous collaboration. Millions of players have enjoyed our work together. It's been a good collaboration. But there's been an opportunity cost. What has been missed because of variance? What kind of thing have I wrought onto this world? Uh, I don't know. I'd like to think that each individual contribution I made, each time it's been code reviewed, tested, etc., has been worth it. I'd like to think that. Maybe it's not been. With science, we always have some room for doubt. And so, I doubt myself. It's reasonable to doubt. But okay. Um, that's my background. Um, that all of that said, even though like most of these things I'm suggesting are bad, or just would discourage doing like implementing keyboard, implementing any of these things, I would encourage implementing and has been implemented support for um, blind people. Accessibility is an important thing. Um, I've encouraged support for that and continue to encourage su increasing support for that. Um, accessibility is important and easily forgotten and should not be that way. Um, separately, um, and this is least important, so which is why I'm leaving it until last. I would actually encourage development of Smart Move, but not for gameplay. Not for gameplay modes, not for most modes. Um, for entering a PGN, for entering like a game into a study, I would encourage use of Smart Move. It's a nice, convenient feature. It doesn't affect gameplay. You don't have to make sure it works for gameplay. It only affects studies. If it stops working for studies, you can remove the feature. Players will not lose their minds over this being there or not being there. This is a technique that's part of standard products. If you look at chess base, if I don't know what other products are out there, but obviously chess base has smart move for quick game entry. So somebody who's entering a dozen or a hundred or a thousand games um, can quickly enter them. Smart move makes sense there. Separately, Puzzle Racer. That's exciting, right? How about Smart Move for Puzzle Racer? Can you imagine people losing their minds Smart Moving in Puzzle Racer? There's no leaderboard. There's no ratings at stake. It's all good, clean fun. It could be faster. You could make it so a player doesn't have to drag their rook all the way across the board to execute the move. Just simply making them click on the destination square when there are 64 squares to choose from. Uh, well, I'm sorry. There's probably like 16 of them are already occupied, but still. Like, this exercise of just click the correct square and we'll figure out which piece you meant. And that much of the time it works, but sometimes it won't work because there will be piece, multiple pieces that could go to the same square and you'll need to handle that manually. I still think it would be so hilarious to watch Smart Move in action on Puzzle Racer. I think players would lose their minds over it in a, the most joyful sense of the word. Um, is it worth developing? Probably not. Could somebody make an extension and everybody enjoy it? Probably. Would that extension be secure? Probably not. So, God, software is complicated. But, um, so is it worth implementing? Probably not. Should it be implemented anyway? Probably. <laughs> oh, software is so complicated. Anyway. Yeah, um, so does the keyboard extension work, by the way? I'm honestly asking, because for the last month I've been unable to figure this out. 
I downloaded the source code. I read the source code. I've read all the Lee Chess patches. I've, I could be as best informed as anybody not using this can be informed about it. As much as people have very strong opinions about use of the keyboard, does it work? It used to work. As best as I know, it's broken. It doesn't work. But if it does work, I'd like to try it out in Puzzle Racer. I'd like to try it out in just puzzles in general. I'd like to try it out for entering a game quickly. But it's my impression that doesn't work. Um, as much excitement as there has been about this keyboard extension, it's broken. It does not work. That's my understanding. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. A few months ago, the developer... There's actually a team on Lee Chess called Welcome Lee Chess Keyboards or something like that in which the developer publicly announces that they have stopped support for the app or the extension. They have delisted it They're, or whatever the case is. Like they're not working on it anymore and it's broken and it doesn't use the Leeches APIs. And there is no Leeches API for, I want to play a bullet game with the keyboard. There are Leeches APIs for, I want to play rapid and classical games. Um, using the board API. There's not such a thing for Blitz or Bullet or Ultra Bullet. That's entirely on that developer who created the extension to choose if they want to maintain it or not. Or it's on the part of anybody who's making all these assertions about what do you think about keyboard? What do you think about keyboard? What keyboard? There's a keyboard? So yeah, I think context matters. Yeah. So, yeah, given that I've spent a month trying to figure this out, if somebody could clue me in, I'd like to know. Um, so, yeah, I guess maybe I could look out for what Akash is doing. Maybe he could clue me in. Um, yeah, I don't have anything morally against it. I think um, there are quite a few players that would react very strongly. Whether that, oh, I'm sorry, that's back to my earlier point. Um, even if you're absolutely morally convinced that you're doing the right thing and accusing a player, or if you're absolutely morally convinced of any particular thing, consider, like, there are millions of people who play the game of chess in hundreds of countries around the world. Consider that even a single word could set off any one of these players to say, or whatever. Not that it should, but just consider that things need to be handled gracefully. Even if you're completely, absolutely correct, don't go accusing your opponent. It's just really poor form. It's an amateur thing to do. Um, especially, well, I don't even need to dig any further than that. Like, any serious chess professional should not do things that bring the merit of the game or the reputation of the game into question. That's clearly spelled out in FIDE policy. FIDE partners with chess.com. Like, here, you can't have a titled player who's breaking the FIDE rules. It's happened before, but that's not good for the game. So, yeah. My golly. Um, yeah, don't do things that bring the reputation of the game into question. If you are making accusations, do it in some fun way. And then come back afterward and apologize profusely and um, say, ha ha, I was just joking. I didn't really mean it. I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. Yeah, so that's how I would suggest about doing this sort of thing.
Um, not that everybody has to do that, but like, just consider there are a lot of people who enjoy this game. And I don't think I'm one of them anymore. This game is just not fun. When you have organization against organization, player against player, like, playing on the board is fun. Angle shooting off the board has just gotten completely out of control. I don't think I'm enjoying this anymore. And this is even before I stopped playing real-life tournaments. And it just continues to get worse every day, every year. Um, I think eventually, and this probably is not in my time, that players will realize that it's not such a bad thing if an opponent uses an engine. That's a radical thought for this decade. Um, it's a radical thought in the context of a tournament, or in context of money events, or other events with reputations. Like, obviously their players will have a very difficult time understanding or allowing use of an engine. And perhaps that's correct. The, perhaps they're all right. I mean, perhaps the players are correct to say that engines are absolutely forbidden in money events, in rated events, in any kind of significant event where the players know who each other are, where players know who the website are, is, where players know um, that there's money and prizes and fame and fortune, etc. at stake. Perhaps in these contests, we'll never see a day where engines are allowed. And that's okay. Perhaps for live streams, we'll reach a point where players are not allowed to live stream on sites if there's the possibility that their opponent is cheating. Maybe that's another way. So perhaps if a player live streams on the site, they have to sign a waiver saying, I will not accuse my opponents. Or perhaps just live streaming can't happen anymore because a few people ruin it for everyone else. I don't know. It's complicated. These are tremendous things to consider, and things too large for me to consider on my own. But I'm just saying, like, I don't see the, our sport going in a positive direction. I see it trending the other way, day by day, year by year. I see other games on the rise. So at some point, I've got to cash out my chips. When's that going to happen? I don't know. I'm not sure, like, what day, what month, what year will be the last. Uh, there eventually will come some time where I'm just like, hey, I found some other game. I really enjoyed this other game. And the moderators and whatever with this game are just so much better than that in our current struggles. Um, is that going to be this year? Probably not. Is it going to be this decade? Probably not. But, you know, if this kind of shit continues to happen, um, you know, it's what kind of ecosystem is being wrought when players bring the game into disrepute? I don't know. Is it something I want to continue to be part of? I'm not sure. Or rather, the question isn't that. The question is how long do I continue being part of it? Um, and again, there are rules and processes and procedures for most things. For this particular thing, there's not a rule or procedure. There is a rule. The rule is that the players should not do things to bring the game into disrepute. The rule's been violated. The rule has flagrantly been violated, 
And as chess.com continues publishing more articles and never issuing an apology for the actions of that staff member, it's just terrible. And it does not do anything to uplift the environment. And okay, fine, you are correct that very likely this particular opponent in this particular game, it seems to have cheated. You are likely that, or you are correct that in this game between this Grandmaster versus the Amateur, um, the Grandmaster won the game. Okay. Can we elevate our sport beyond this? Or are we going to have to stoop to the level of the lowest ranking staff member? Not in terms of payment, not in ter not lowest ranking in most ways you think about it but lowest ranking just in terms of like what is abundantly clear that i don't even need to say here so is it a part of, is this an ecosystem i want to be part of i don't know will i eventually cash my chips out yeah there's going to be a brighter gra uh greener grass in some other field a brighter sun some other day somewhere else it's only a matter of all things come and pass uh, so it's only natural like perhaps i find something where i enjoy other interests that's natural i don't have to stay with chess forever there's some people who choose to do that and they enjoy it their entire lives and more power to them that's excellent for those people. Um, but yeah, there was a point at which one of my friends was asking me if I had interest in learning more about uh, directing tournaments, because I have directed tournaments in the past. Um, and uh, at that time, and I think still at present, I think still... The answer is I'm not interested in actually directing the tournaments. Um, yeah, I could make money. I could become famous. Whatever. I'm not in it for money. I'm not in it for fame. Um, I don't like being slandered, so there is still that thing I have against that chess site, but still. Uh, they would... Um, but yeah, I'm not in it for any kind of fame or glory. There was Cicero who says, like, if fame comes in after, if fame is here after death, I'm in no hurry for it. And I think he's right. There's no reason to want to be famous. There are reasons to want to change the lives of other people, to help them out. Um, would my, I don't know. These are all open questions. Um... So, um, yeah, I think, honestly, everything is an open question. And, like, again, that's, I'm not holding anything against Lee Chess. That's not their fault for being inactive in any of this. They probably have good reasons to be inactive. Um... Like, in any one particular incident, how would Leech us ever respond to any one of these incidents without, like, coming out as having, like, some kind of grudge? Well, I mean, there are ways, but is it worth pursuing? I don't know. There are already rules and procedures in place by FIDE for players who bring the sport into disrepute. Except in this one exceptional circumstance where... Clearly, nothing's happened yet, and it's doubtful anything ever will happen. Um, and there's still no apology from the player. There's still no apology from the website. There's still... it's. It seems like nothing will ever happen there. And that might be fine. Um... It's fine for FIDE to have rules and not enforce them. 
there's nothing that says, oh, because you have a rule, it's necessary to enforce the rule at all costs. No, that's not how rules work. So, um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, you've been having fun with chess again by making studies, and puzzle making's giving you joy in chess again. Yeah, puzzle making's a hard pursuit. Um, I do have an interest in arts and sciences. So, yeah, even if I completely withdrew from chess, would I ever withdraw from coding, from making cool software with the best team that ever made software ever? I don't know. Maybe I would. Maybe I'd withdraw from that, or maybe I'd continue. There's, it's all situational. Everything always is. It's kind of ironic you actually ask the question because, like, I've hardly coded any Lee chess code in recent years. Almost everything I've done has been stockfish. And Lee chess has been gracious enough to release and update and test my stockfish versions. They've been very helpful. Um, so we've been able to produce wonderful, uh, collaborations together, but that isn't Lee chess code. I wouldn't wish that code on anyone. Its maintenance is impossible. So, um, yeah. So here Black's considering, do they put their king on f6? Because a possible plan of, like, king e6... Oh, I'm sorry, king e6 drops the rook. King e8, navigating the king over to f6, which involves bishop e6 and then allows h4 check. After h4 check, king h2, pawn d2. There is a good chance that would promote, but this is much simpler. And white resigns. Um, did Lee Shogi ever get import... Kifu working. Nope. That's still in my court. Honestly, a lot of things have been reprioritized lately. Um, so, I've taken some interest in music again. I've taken an interest in musicians again. That's interesting to me. Um, it's extremely surprising to me that I've taken such interests recently. But anyway, what the uh, conclusion of all that is, is that um, I didn't expect to be doing this talking thing right now. I expected that my priorities have completely shifted, and they will very, very soon. My next priority is to play through some games um, that I've been in my backlog for a very long time that are near and dear and special to me. Um, after all that's been played through, um, there's a lot of coding projects that are important to me, but I don't get paid for. They're all hobby work. So importing a Kifu, it's not something I'm compensated for. If it were something I were compensated for, I'd prioritize accordingly, but it's not a priority right now. Uh, yeah, I was, I was the person working on it. It was volunteer effort. I've half implemented it. The other half still needs to be coded. But I have, like, every motivation to do basically everything other than that right now. So, uh, take a number <laughs> or sponsor me, but like my rate absolutely cannot be afforded. So just take a number. It's not worth it. Um, I mean, like the JSA could afford it, but still the JSA like doesn't, they're not even endorsing, uh, Lee Shogi. So, Yeah. The developer of Lee Shogi is sponsored. He has his own sponsorship model. Um, 
he does tremendous work. And I did contribute one other patch, and he's testing it right now, I guess. I don't know. He's extremely busy. Um, so, he's done extraordinary work. I am in awe at just how much work he's put into the site. Um, so, yeah, I contribute code, I contribute ideas and advice. Um, somehow I'm recognized as a patron on that site, and I'm grateful for that. It is a good site. But is it something like, is it my top priority? No, not by a long shot at present. Unfortunately, um, yeah, just a lot of other things have suddenly popped to the top of my personal queue. So that's how that's going. Um, that's not a question for me. Sorry. I think the answer is yes, but that's not a question for me. Um, because if the answer is anything other than yes, then like that immediately raises other questions. So I cannot answer that. Um, I'm almost certain that you answer is yes, but that's not a question for me. So I apologize for having to give such an answer. Um, so, um, but yeah, a lot of things have come to the top of my personal queue at the moment, uh, as I talk about exiting the sport of chess, <laughs> other things have come up so unexpectedly. So, um, yeah, uh, even so I still have opinions about the chess ecosystem. So the fact like that I did this particular live stream at all uh is surprising to me but especially as all my priorities just shifted to have this additional shift thrown in with all the other shifts has got me a bit dizzy but yeah i will be getting through um uh other things on the priority list it'll eventually circle back to everything else but yeah i think it just shows like everyone's human i'm human my priorities are in flux, and that's just how humans operate. So, um, yeah, I see, uh, well, no, I'm trying to think, is there anything else I could say about this other than the many things that I've alluded to or said? I don't think so. Um, I think things are going to continue to be the way they are. I'm less than thrilled with the publications that have been produced on that blog. Um, again, I say, like, there's... I can get why Lee Chess isn't making public comments about the video, about the blog, about any of it. Um... But this is just sad. That's what it is. Not the action, but like the reactions and the inactions are sad. So I think that's the, the last part I wanted to get out is that, um, yeah, that even though I have strong opinions, I can't pursue this forever. Even though there are rules, rules don't get enforced. People are above the rules. Uh, this has happened before and it's happened again. That people can be above rules. So. Um, I'm not saying rules have to be enforced. Um, so. Yeah. If you've ever seen, there is a wonderful, completely unrelated game. By... Um, Capcom. There's the whole Ace Attorney series. And I believe it's this game Justice for All. Where you really get a sense of what justice means. I'm sorry, I'm 
I miss speaking. I meant to say Apollo Justice. Yeah. Um, the, the Apollo Justice game really forces you to take a close look at rules, procedures, thoughts, etc. Like, so it really forces you to put into context the fact that there could be rules and the rules could have problems. There could be legal loopholes. There could be rules loopholes. Like, rules don't exist as an entity unto themselves, but to try to help people get along better with each other. And consistent enforcement of rules tends to help with that. But rules don't have to be enforced. Um, but on the other hand, doing absolutely nothing when there is a rule will raise questions and concerns, as it should. Um, and, yeah, uh, those questions and concerns are beyond my ability to address. And so this is part of why I'm just considering exiting the game entirely. I've done it before, I've left the game for years at a time. I've just said, you know what, I'm not improving at this, but not only am I not improving, I'm just not enjoying it. Um, I don't think I feel that way playing the game. I don't think I feel that way playing puzzles. Um, but in terms of competition, like, the competitive aspect of the game is horrifying. It really is. Everybody puts a brave face on it, but, yeah, I, I just don't get it. So, um... There's always some fun narrative that's spun with every contest to make it more exciting. Um, I don't understand it. Again, too much for me to know, too much for me to understand. But uh, these casual games are so enjoyable. Studying your games, learning to play end games better, learning to solve puzzles, learning to create puzzles, like you say. These are all fun activities. Competing in rated play when there's serious stakes, th that's just, I don't understand. I've played in an amateur league in my area. In this amateur league, I used to take this very seriously. Perhaps to the point where I've inspired others to do the same. And that's not a good thing. I'm just trying to be the change I want to see in the world, and even my own perspe perspective shifts from year to year. So, what can I do? This is why there are rules and procedures, because even I'm imperfect. Even if I gave this all the thought, all the time in the world, and really meditated on this and tried to come up with a perfect answer, that's not something I'm going to be able to produce. It's an answer that's always going to be changing. So I need to work within whatever rules, etc. makes sense. Um, there's actually a video by a lawyer who explains how to get exactly what you want at a restaurant um, to get the best possible service to truly enjoy your experience. And he brings up things like, um, it's difficult to force the restaurant to give you exactly what you want. But by these simple tricks, you can get exactly what you want and have the best possible experience sort of thing. And he was actually right. Schedule the appointment at the restaurant, show up on time, be familiar with the menu, be familiar with the restaurant's terms, policies, etc. Uh, if you don't enjoy it, go to a different restaurant. Like, that sort of thing. So, these are good practical pieces of advice. Like, they're obvious and commonplace. You can actually ask to, for them to customize orders, and some restaurants will do it, some won't. Know your venue. Like, a lot of these things make sense. So the reason I say that is like rules and laws and procedures exist to try to help people get along better. 
not as an entity unto themselves, but they try to improve the overall situation. So in the case of this one particular incident, maybe there's reasons the rules exist and we want the game to get into disrepute. Maybe it appealing to the widest possible audience and putting on some goofy face, if it is goofy, I'm not sure. Making videos with provocative titles, if they are provocative, and I'm not sure. Maybe this is where chess is headed. Maybe we need this to be like some online support where folks like send in the clowns. Maybe. Maybe this is what chess is destined for. Maybe when some players express concern about the game sliding into disrepute, uh, maybe they're right. Maybe they're wrong. I don't know. Again, these are too complex for me to understand, but yeah, I, I think that's about all I can say. Um, thanks for hearing out my rant. I'd like to think I educated in some way, but um, really, at the end of it all, because I have nowhere else to turn, I turn to public opinion here. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, separately, I'm still tracking the political story. Um, the House bill that has made its way, or is trying to make its way to the Senate, I'm still following that. We'll see if anything happens. If politicians can say things like corporations are people too, hopefully politicians can also say things like women are people too. Um, and really, they could, it can be said that there could be a need for fair debate. And perhaps this particular bill that got passed the House might be a terrible bill, might be a great bill. I don't know. Um, rules, procedures, etc. are complicated. So things will work themselves out somehow. At least we hope. Um, it's not like anybody wants malice. Like, yeah. People don't want to, like, take away women's rights. Uh, it's just sad that, like, we've, uh, last century, we passed an amendment that's, uh, that allowed uh, equal rights for women, including the right to vote. It took us forever to get that. Um, we got that last century. Despite having the right to vote, like, look at the things that are still happening. Look, we have a Speaker of the House. We have, I mean, goodness, we did elect this current president. And I would assume, I need to look at the numbers, but I would assume that um, female candidates preferred one politician and male candidates preferred it. I don't know if it broke down that way or not. But our current president and our current Speaker of the House have been... They've been putting on these press conferences and releases that do nothing to advance their bill and do everything to vilify the other party. And if that's their mission, then mission accomplished. Um, but it's sad that with women having the right to vote, that this is the shit we still deal with. That, my goodness, can we aspire to some higher ground, please? Can we stop demonizing our opponents and actually get something done? There may be demons, but there's no need to demonize, so... Anyway, I'll be following that political story if there's any news or updates on it during this Women's History Month, which is rapidly expiring. If women, uh, if violence against women 
is something that needs to be corrected. Um, hopefully the House and Senate will come together to correct it. I'm still outraged that the House has acted so immaturely and the Senate has acted so irresponsibly. It's Condemnation goes all the way around on that one. But if there are any updates, we'll let you know. I'll keep you posted about uh, what I first started with, with the OpenSSL security concern, because last year there were two similar in pra impact category concern. Uh, so yeah, we'll see whether or not um, there's some urgent fix or not. I'll have to do my own evaluation or rely on the word of experts if experts freely provide their opinions, but why would they freely provide it? Um, maybe there are some benevolent... Oh, that's silly. Oh, you fool! <laughs> All right, anyway. Yeah, but why would an expert freely provide their opinion? To advance the arts and sciences. It's not because experts are sponsored. So, yeah, I'll be the fool. I'll freely provide my opinion, and it's worth what you pay for it. Um, and that's nothing, really. I'm not asking for payment. Um, I don't want it. Um, so, yeah, we'll stay on top of all these various stories as they evolve. There's just so much to keep track of in this complex world. But we'll try to keep a positive spin about it all. Um, yeah, and we'll look forward to all the other uh, content, etc. I'll soon be providing. I'm going to go enjoy dinner now. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.